OK. Let's create something we can work on. We'll talk about most used functions in 3ds Max, which are, selection, moving, rotating and scaling objects. As for the selection, you can filter it. Close here is filter. For example let's choose shapes. And now our objects cannot be selected because there are geometry. After switching to geometry they become selectable. And of course switching to all lets you select any object. The same function can be found here. There are objects on the list and you can select them. By holding down control both of them can be selected here. And here are filters. All of them are turned on by default. If display geometry will be turned off, then all geometry objects will disappear from the list. This way you can filter objects you want to see on the list. Now notice that when you click Q several times, it changes selection mode. Default mode is rectangular selection, which is standard selection type. But there are also other types like circle. Here is fence selection. After clicking you start drawing the line and confirm each line with mouse click. Double click confirms selection. Next here is lasso which lets us draw any selection shape. Another one is this spray icon. It's selecting by painting. When you hold mouse button such circle appears, and everything it touches is selected. Pretty important function that prevents the selection of something you do not want to select is crossing. You can find it right here. Obviously, any objects touched with selection tool will be selected, and this is a problem sometimes. And here comes crossing. Now objects can't be selected you see. It's because when crossing is on, only objects that are fully in selection field will be selected. Let's turn it off now. Another thing is move tool. As you can see some arrows appeared here. You can grab them and use to move objects in directions they point at. There are also the planes you can grab and move object along them. For example with this plane I can move object in both X and Z directions. Here you can find a little square. With this you can move the object parallel to the current view. Here's rotation tool. It works very similar way. There isn't much to discuss actually. Gray circle always rotates parallel to the current view. Now let's undo these operations to get back to original state. Operations can be undone by standard Ctrl Z shortcut or by left arrow icon. Like in other programs. Nothing unusual here. And here is scaling tool. 
you can scale along a plane. Or to scale in chosen direction. Hitting scaling shortcut more times will be changing scaling mode. But it's not so important. It's really rarely used. Here's another function which is useful sometimes. Select and rotate and select and move. As you can see it tries to behave intelligently and stick one box to another here. If there's no other object nearby then it sticks to this grey grid. Let's place it here. And you can see that this rotating works similarly. For all these four tools there are two important parameters. It's coordinate system and point center. As you can see, now point center is placed on the bottom of this object. Thank to this option you can change it for example to center. By default it's using pivot point. Pivot point refers to the center and the local coordinates of each object. All objects have their own coordinates and centers, which makes it easier to manipulate them. Here's selection center. It simply calculates an object's center by referring to its maximum height and width. Next here is Transform Coordinate Center. As you can see in perspective view, it appears here permanently in the center. In other views it works same way. No matter what, pivot point will stay in the center of the view. Another important parameter I've mentioned before is Reference Coordinate System. You chose your coordinates here. For example now it's set to view here. If you rotate now, and get back to Move Tool, then you can notice that it uses same coordinates you can see here in the left corner. These are global coordinates. That's why they'll always be like those in the corner. If you'll switch it for example to local, then it changes all. It works different now as you can see. It sometimes really saves the situation and facilitates control over objects. Anyway, most often you will use view and local coordinates. Sometimes maybe screen too. Screen, as you can see, is always perpendicular to the view. Other coordinates are related to objects that are in a particular hierarchy. Linked ones. But that's something for later discussion. In general it can be said that there's a parent and a child object. And the child can use the parent object's coordinates. At the moment it is probably unclear. However, it is something that will come out in practice. Still, even in such situations you most often use local coordinates. Things like parent or gimbal are used only in specific situations, and rest of those is used really rarely.